200 miles south of the Western Australian capital of Perth stands Cape Lewin Lighthouse. Erected in 1895, it overlooks the meeting place of two great oceans, the Indian and Southern. Long before any lighthouse stood here, mariners of the caliber of Captain Matthew Flinders were exploring and mapping this coastline. St. Alouan Island was named by Flinders in honor of his daughter. There was once a flourishing colony of seals on nearby Sea Island, but they were exterminated by early hunters. Today, the lighthouse operates in much the same way as it did when it came into being at the turn of the century, with its giant lenses, powerful kerosene vapor burners, and finely balanced machinery. to the lighthouse, today a modern navigational aid is beamed from the radio transmission tower. It automatically sends out signals to ship's navigators far beyond the visual range of the Cape Lewin light. Although the lighthouse warns seafarers to keep clear, the Bustle Highway invites travelers from near and far to the local towns of Augusta and Margaret River. In this southwest corner of the Australian continent, the holiday maker finds much to offer in sport and recreation. Running alongside Augusta is the Blackwood River. Here, the waterways are abundant with wildlife, such as the black swan, Western Australia's state emblem. Several miles inland from the sea, it's not unusual to find porpoises, and as always, they find time for a little play. There's good sport here for the angler, and launch fishing is popular. But for those who haven't good sea legs, a solution has been found by these aerial anglers. Two disused mine shaft cables securely anchored on either side of the bay with a flying fox to sit in have given these men a gull's eye view and good fishing too. At Deep Dean, a nearby tourist spot, a bird lover puts on a regular display of feeding wild birds. To attract them, he's developed a special call. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Kookaburras, by nature, have to be extremely swift in getting their food. But when it's as easy as this, 
There's even time for a second helping. In the early days, Hamlin Bay was once a busy seaport, handling the shipping of vast quantities of timber and produce for the area. Today, while it's still rich in natural beauty, little remains to tell of its bygone activity. Never a very safe anchorage for shipping, Hamelin Bay finally went out of operation following a severe storm early in the century when six vessels were sunk. Another reminder of the past is the old water wheel at Cape Lewin. It was used to pump water to the nearby lighthouse community. Now it's encrusted with thick lime deposits from the spring water which provided its power. The spring still flows as strongly today as it did in the past. To the pioneers of 1830, Augusta was an outpost of extreme hardship. Many who found difficulties too great moved northward to Margaret River. Still standing is the old homestead of the Bustle family, who are perhaps the best known of the original settlers. It was here they established successful farming. Today, beef cattle and dairying started by the early settlers have developed into an important industry, supplying much of the needs of the bigger cities to the north. In the district, virgin country is still being cleared to make way for new farmlands. What a far cry today with the aid of modern bulldozers from the bare hands and axes of the past. But big machinery is necessary, for there's a lot of work here to develop the country for new farmlands, new settlers, and new industry. Only recently a discovery was made of extensive sponge iron deposits at Scott River. This valuable mineral, handy to the sea, can be easily transported to world markets. Only inches below the surface, the ore can be cheaply mined by open cut methods. In one square mile, there's estimated to be 25 million tons. In the tourist field, there is a well-established underground wealth. In a 60-mile area stretching from Cape Lewin to Cape Naturalist, there are over 100 known limestone caves. Since the first cave was opened up for inspection in 1900, thousands of visitors have explored these local attractions. A recent discovery, and one of the most popular today, is the Augusta Jewel Cave. Here, experienced guides are on hand to conduct visitors through the underground caverns. You'd better hang on to the railing as you come down. It's rather steep and a little bit slippery. What's the idea of the second door here? Oh, just an airlock to stop the air getting in and oxidizing and otherwise spoiling the formations. Gee, it's much cooler down here. Yes, it's about 68 degrees. Uh, watch your head under there. The temperature varies only a few degrees down here between winter and summer. Now, if you just come over along here to the edge of the platform, we'll show you some of the formations. These formations coming down from the roof are known as stalactites. What actually happens is the winter rains percolate down through the porous limestone and create a calcium bicarbonate solution. As it drips in here, 
the moisture content evaporates and slowly these calcium carbonates are formed, which are known as stalactites. What are those things like whiskers on the side there? See, up there. Ah, you'll find them all through the caves here. They're known as helictites. Actually, they were at one time known as mysteries because they seem to defy gravity. There's been a lot of theories advanced as to how they're formed. One explanation defines it scientifically as capillary action and surface tension. It's mainly pressure. We accidentally broke a few of the active ones and they squirted out about eight feet. This is known as cauliflower coral, which has grown over a stalactite. It's a formation which takes place underwater. In the past, the water was much higher. It's only about two to four feet deep now. Here at the end of the lake, we have a flowstone formation, which we call the organ pipes. The colouring is due to iron oxide seeping in with a solution. Over here, we have an unusual formation. It's rather unique in regard to the colouring. It has the experts baffled as they haven't been able to ascertain what chemicals have come through to cause the colouring. We call this the coloured shawl. With a light behind it, you'll note the transparent effect. It's only about five sixteenths of an inch thick. The coloured streaks are caused again by iron oxide. Amongst all this beauty of nature, there's been a tragedy, and it must have happened about a hundred years ago. These are the remains of a brush-tailed possum, which no doubt fell down the entrance hole, wandered around in the dark with no way of getting out, and finally died. Over the years, this must have happened quite a few times. These are the remains of a Tasmanian tiger, and to give you an idea of how old the caves are, geologists estimate the skeleton to be 25,000 years old. The heavy encrustation is over three quarters of an inch thick. Just up here is a broken column. At one time it was joined to the roof section, but a gradual subsiding of the cave floor has made it slowly break away. Notice the fluted effect in the middle there? We call this the carry forest, and with a little imagination, it's not unlike the appearance of a real forest. Here is the actual root of a giant carry tree. In its search for water, it has come a distance of 40 feet through the limestone root of the cave, carried right on down through this cavern, and finally down further to a cave below here. It draws the water up a total distance of 140 feet to the surface. And it is to the surface that we now return. The sun has come to the end of its day's work. The mantles of the Cape Lewin beacon are warming to the task of lightening the evening sky. Peacefully, night falls over this fertile, pleasant corner of southwest Australia.